Hello, this is Mr. Ferreira, and I'm going to continue the series on A level psychology on attachment and specifically cultural variations in attachment. They also tell us that we need to look at Van Isseldorn as part of our understanding. Now, before we get into the, the, the meat of things, we perhaps need to take a step forward, a step backwards, I should say, and kind of ask ourselves kind of where this comes from. And I suppose the first thing we could look is at Bowlby's theory. Um, and the key thing to Bowlby's theory was that it had a biological function. And, uh, and as such, attachment becomes important for survival. Now, if this is the case, obviously it means that attachment is innate. And we would find that secure attachment ultimately would be the goal for all kind of human beings. And and so part of what we're looking at is this idea that if we can find that attachment is universal, that it is found in all cultures and that secure attachment is kind of part of that process, then ultimately um, kind of Bowlby's ideas are right and, and the, the question of culture is more to do with childbearing practices rather than it being an innate biological thing. Now, of course, if this is not something which kind of doesn't appeal to you then kind of like don't worry about it uh, what we need to look at is some of the specifics now part of my understanding of variations in attachment will come from my own experiences of growing up in a different culture and living in the UK and also partly from um, uh, watching a, a, a specific video and this video is called babies and here we have uh, pictures of the four babies that were part of the series and what they did is they followed this uh, these babies from birth until until about 12 months into their lives kind of looking at both similarities and differences and it's absolutely fascinating and you can watch a, a trailer of it on on youtube definitely kind of having uh, worth having a look and uh, just for kind of weird kind of things that kind of kind of come across things like um, the African baby and the American baby kind of probably have more similarities than differences um, though of course obviously hygiene may well be a concern um, in one uh, c country compared to the other and things like that so absolutely definitely worth having a look at so this is also a topic that many students do struggle with because they kind of struggle to get structured to it because it doesn't have structure in the same way as some of the other courses. So um, in order for me to put some structure into this, I have kind of numbered some of this and I'll kind of talk about the things that I think um, you could potentially write in an essay or certainly in any form of extended writing. So let's have a look. The first thing we need to consider in terms of cultural variations is that we need to understand child rearing practices before we carry out and interpret the strange situation. Now, after the strange situation in terms of types of attachments, we find that this becomes almost a universal tool um, for uh, researchers and psychologists and, and, and people interested in this to kind of figure out what a child's attachment is. However, we're going to see that there's a few kind of uh, kind of hiccups so to speak in the process and so therefore this statement is a lot more telling than you think the statement that says you need to understand child ring practices before you interpret the strange situation studies so let's have a look at this so van Isseldorn this is potentially the person that they've asked us to have a look at. Um, I'm going to add his research where he worked with Cronenberg, um, though Van Isseldorn kind of publishes quite a lot of different work, but we find that ultimately um, this is one of the key focuses of the specification. So what he does is a meta-analysis um, and he analyzes the findings, and this is the key to meta-analysis. It's not the data that he's analyzing, it's kind of the published work of 32 studies on attachment. Okay. We also know from this particular meta-analysis that there were um, eight different countries and that um, 15 of the studies were done in the US and overall we can see that there's quite a significant amount of children that would have been included in these 32 studies and so of course the key focus we're going to have a look at is that there are different cultures there different studies what does it tell us about attachment so first things first and I'm not sure why it's moved down there let's have a look at this we see quite literally that 
we look at the different countries here that we kind of have a few anomalies now i'm not necessarily going to talk about uh israel here at this stage but i will mention that later but kind of the studies that kind of jump out at us are japan with this very big red bar which is insecure resistant germany which has a very big orange bar and um, which is insecure avoidant and then take it from there okay so we're going to have a look at all the different things that he potentially potentially kind of has a look at so um oh just for my own kind of uh, labeling processes we can think of japan in terms of takahashi and we can think of germany in terms of grossman and grossman okay so let's have a look at some of these things so the first things first is that actually the variation was small the variation was small so in some ways it would be expected that looking at so many different studies across different countries that this particular graph would actually be a lot more different but we see actually a quite significant amount of them are actually securely attached and we see that actually you know the percentages aren't as dramatic maybe as we'd like to have and so this is the first thing we can say is that between cultures uh, cultures or countries in this particular case that there actually isn't very much difference in the attachment types you see quite clearly from the diagram that uh, secure attachment is the most common in every single country. So therefore, in some ways, this does highlight a bit what Bowlby was talking to us about, this idea that kind of attachment is, is universal or common in all cultures. We also see that we have... Um, Insecure avoidance as being the next most common classification, except for two particular countries, and that's Israel and Japan. And we see that um, most of the countries kind of mimic this idea of what was found in the USA. And so we can say from this particular research that attachment is universal. So quite a lot to unpack from that. Um, in terms of the meta-analysis telling us about secure attachment, that variation is small, that potentially that insecure avoidant is the next kind of common most found attachment types across the world. Let's try and unpack them just a little bit more, okay? Because what they also found was this, the variation between results within the same country were greater than between countries. Okay, because one of the things that they actually found was that, so for example, in the USA, where there was, there was 15 studies, so that's the same country, we find that actually there are a few anomalies. So for example, they found that one study only had 46% secure attachment compared to another study that had 90% secure attachment. So what we're actually seeing here is that we've got to be careful of just automatically assuming that variation will be so dramatically different between one culture to another. And that ultimately, variation could have other factors. Now it could be, um, and we'll see later in this, that it could be the difference between rural and urban, that there could be a big difference between growing up in one particular kind of part of um, the world where it's urbanized compared to another part of the world where it's rural. Um, and, and actually, it's that over-reliance on just the assumption that, that cultures kind of produce difference um, where actually within a culture there could be a lot of difference as well. So taking that on board, let's look at some of the individual studies that would have been part of the, the Van Iseldorn and Cronenberg study. And Grossman and Grossman is a typical example of this. Now the reason we use Grossman and Grossman is that it's kind of because it has a significant kind of variation in terms of the outcome. So first of all, it says that German infants were likely to be classified as insecurely attached. In fact, what they actually discovered is that they had a very high rate of insecure avoidance. Okay, but of course, it's easy then to kind of make an assumption about the German population saying, well, okay, so they are different to every, everywhere else. But it could actually be their child rearing practices that ultimately facilitates the outcome. So for example, we see in the German culture that there's a lot more respect for personal space and less close contact. So it could be that children from a very young age in that particular culture learn to kind of keep some element of proximity from their parents. 
Now, if we go back to Ainsworth, once again, we look at one of the, the one of the features of insecure avoidance is this kind of avoidance of the parent or showing uh, not showing secure base um, kind of exploration behavior. And so, of course, actually what we just have found there is that maybe there's a misinterpretation of the strange situation for the German culture by, uh, for Grossman and Grossman. And children do not engage in proximity-seeking behavior that is expected. So what happens is ultimately you could argue that Grossman and Grossman gives us the appearance of insecure attachment where ultimately they could have secure attachment. And so Grossman and Grossman is used as an example to demonstrate the differences in cross-cultural attachment. The next example we often turn to is Takahashi. Now Takahashi is one of those legacy studies that we often looked at at the A-level psychology. Um, that's mainly because we used to have to know a lot more detail about studies um, in and and in order to facilitate the kind of not needing to know another study in as much detail, we used to use Takahashi because it's exactly the same as Ainsworth. However, what we have is a slightly different outcome. So first of all, we find that working with the same kind of middle class kind of uh, J Japanese kind of baby, uh, mother baby combinations, we find that there's a quite a, a kind of remarkable difference in that they have the highest rate of insecure resistant babies of 32%. In fact, there weren't any insecure avoidant. It was either secure or insecure resistant. Now, once again, it's easy to kind of draw those conclusions about, OK, so the Japanese culture is producing this difference here. But we see it could actually be because of a small factor like this. So showing extreme stress. Now, that's a feature of um, of Ainsworth looking at insecure, resistant children. But of course, once again, the child rearing practices of the Japanese children is that they have very little reason to actually separate from their mother. And as such, being separated from the mother would not cause mild stress that Ainsworth was hoping to find in the strange situation, but extreme stress. And ultimately, it was the tool that was faulty and not the, the Japanese kind of culture. So we see once again through Grossman and Grossman and Takahashi, we got these kind of slight anomalies based on child rearing practices rather than the accuracy of the strange situation. The third part that I often kind of draw into this is that um, obviously we can use the Van Isseldorn and Cronenberg as an example of the universal nature of attachment, but there might be other studies that can also help us understand this. So I just kind of want to kind of show you some of the things that we do use in order to, to help us with this. So it's, it's this idea of a biological function that becomes important. So Tronic, for example, he looks at a study, uh, or he looks at a, a, a tribe, the FA tribe in Zaire, and he sees that in terms of child rearing, these children are often um, raised by, um, by communally by anyone that's kind of around and even to the extent of breastfeeding by a different person. So that intimacy in terms of kind of like maybe even the learning theory of kind of food being important, all those types of things. Um, the only thing, the only condition they seem to have is, is who the, the, the child ultimately sleeps with in terms of kind of nighttime rest. Okay, so effectively they could be fed by somebody else, they could be looked after by somebody else and don't have that kind of specific one-to-one -one interaction with the mother. Yet despite this, Tronic finds that they still show one primary attachment. Okay, so if attachment wasn't innate and adaptive, then there would be no need for them to show specific attachment to that one particular person. Fox does something quite similar um, in the Israeli kibbutzes. Um, here the children are raised communally once again, this idea that more than one person looks after them. In fact, in these kibbutzes, they are raised by a person called a metaplot. Okay, so that's like a nursery nurse. Um, and so not cared for by the mothers. And certainly after a certain kind of age, they kind of will sleep in different kind of places to, to their family and things like that. 
However, once again, we see that they show particular reunion behaviours towards their mothers, kind of showing a greater attachment towards their mothers. So once again, if attachment wasn't innate or adaptive or kind of this whole part of it kind of being important, we wouldn't have this particular situation. Now, of course, uh, when we had a look at the diagram, I kind of didn't mention um, Israel in that. We can use the Fox study as an example of that. Also quite a high insecure um, a resistant kind of population. So all together, both looking at Fox, looking at um, uh, Tronnik, looking at Grossman and Grossman, Takahashi, all of these types of studies, including Van Isseljohn, we ultimately kind of, we still kind of see that attachment is still formed to the infant's mother or the primary attachment figure. So therefore, kind of demonstrating that potentially attachment is secure, um, secure attachment is universal. Okay, so despite all of the different c countries that we could look at, Germany, Japan, Israel, United States, we see secure attachment kind of happening um, and a primary attachment figure potentially kind of happen happening with regard to this. Now, just to kind of finish this idea off about secure attachment and stuff, um, we need to kind of be aware that ultimately the differences that we find between kind of these types of patterns over here may actually be um, related to the difference in cultural attitudes. It could just be how the child is raised in terms of kind of what kind of what is said and what is done and not because of this whole universal nature of, of attachment. Um, and so it's just that attachment kind of happens in every single culture and is has a massive amount of similarities and there's only these slight kind of like differences that appear because of particular cultural attitudes or ideas in terms of how they raise children. You know, if you just think about this whole idea that, you know, if you're raised in Japan and you don't separate from your mother, then of course you're going to show certain types of behavior when you are separated from your mother and things like that. Now, it's not um, necessarily um, always going to be an essay. Um, a lot of this content is used there for you to be specifically um, uh, be able to answer short questions, um, to do an outline, evaluate, all of those types of things. I do have a section of evaluation for you, and we need to kind of just uh, kind of bear this in mind in terms of extended writing. Um, and I suppose I've kind of hinted at this right from the beginning. It says the method of assessment of the strange situ situation is biased. Um, I have a lot of confidence and faith in Ainsworth and Strange Situation. It does a fantastic job. The science is really good. But we have to ask ourselves, is it appropriate um, for, for cultural variations? And I think the simple answer is no. The Strange Situation was designed by American researcher based on British theory. Okay, Simple as that. So it's very much westernized. Um, so these Anglo-American theories pretty much can't be used to assess um, attachment in other cultures. So, and and this is called imposed ethic. Okay, so it's ultimately this idea that I'm going to take my thoughts and ideas based on my Western culture, and I'm going to impose them on another culture. So, of course, it's just that mere interpretation of what is important. And, and, and if you have had a chance to look at that baby's DVD, you'll kind of see some of those types of things. The technology-based um, kind of baby in Japan, um, the kind of earthy mother of the USA versus the earthy existence of the African child, the remoteness of somebody being raised in Mongolia and things like that. That really is very interesting type of kind of, it's it's those differences that potentially we need to, to celebrate. And of course, if I believe that they aren't valid because of my own culture, then that's in post ethic. So classically, if I'm, if I'm raising my child to exist in a nomadic life of isolation, um, I needed to kind of learn how to, to, to be comfortable with isolation. And we see kind of differences in, in how a child raised in Mongolia potentially will be raised in the United Kingdom or the U USA or, or places where that's not the case. Um, and of course, for example, you know, um, we saw this in Grossman and Grossman, um, this idea of lack of separation anxiety um, or pleasure of reunion in itself may actually just be a Western kind of understanding. It's almost like like this ownership of children that I kind of want my child to kind of miss me and and kind of be happy to see me and, and, and things like that. Um, and, and so if they don't show those things, then I say, well, there must be something wrong. There must be something different. 
Now to kind of add a bit to this, because there's no real kind of theory or study behind this, um, we can turn to a person called Rothbaum who really does do a lot of really interesting research in this. Um, and he kind of attacks this whole thing. He says, attachment theory in research is not relevant because it's rooted in American culture. So he, he's kind of adding that kudos to it. Okay. Um, and he draws a few examples here of the differences between Western and Japanese culture. So um, Bowlby really spoke about sensitivity to the caregiver and 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 of course you know secure base attachment behavior and and all these types of ideas that that typically speaking um you know uh, we would say that these children are then we're raising them to become independent because they're able to kind of from that secure base behavior explore readily and kind of move away from the mother but but this is quite a, a western idea of autonomy and and he would say that just Japanese children are raised differently. And there's this question of interdependence or interdependence. Okay. And in, so independence. Okay. So um, a, a best way to describe this would be, so for example, um, I feel as a Westerner this need that my child needs me. So in the middle of the night that my child calls me and I run to my child and and what they want is for me to to move their blanket because their blanket is is not the way that they sh should should have it be and i come back to my bedroom and i go oh my baby needs me and that's really really important but actually non-western society might view this as being well they're quite interdependent on me so why can't they move the blanket themselves and um, they need me in a different way and i'm saying no no um, i'm ultimately they they have me there and ultimately can become independent and so of course once again sensitivity could well look different in different cultures okay um and and we see that if i use this western tool could ultimately have an invalid judgment because it could be kind of slightly different and i think you know going back to something like takahashi where for example um sensitivity um was seen in secure attachment in in in, in ainsworth and ainsworth would say she deliberately put puts the child under mild stress but of course if it's not doing that if it's putting them under extreme stress it's not the right tool to be used um and so we do feel that Rothbaum needs to be explored. You should really read that section in the textbook and kind of to, to and basically ask the question, can, are we actually measuring the same thing? When I'm using the strange situation in Western society, it may well be appropriate because I've used Western theories to understand um, kind of attachment. But in a different culture, that could be different. Um, once again, go back to maybe the idea of if I need a child to be able to, to be nomadic and isolated, then I can't also just run to its every need because actually it's not going to have that in the future. And so once again, I'm being insensitive to that child if I kind of do everything for it. So kind of look at the different things that potentially different cultures might do to kind of say, well, this is an independent child versus this is an independent child. And then, of course, we do kind of have the... Um, a classic understanding that actually maybe in our understanding of culture are we talking about culture or are we talking about nation okay um and and it could be that sometimes we do look within a nation so for example with the van Isseljorn and Cronenberg we had this big difference um, happening within one particular culture but it could actually be that there's other things so when Isodjorn and Sagi looks into this and he looks at attachment types in Tokyo which is very much an urban setting um, and basically says that um, they're actually quite similar um, in 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 other other western studies so it could be there's a difference between urban and rural and so it says rural settings um there's an over representation of insecure resistant um so in other words kind of just showing that there's a different understanding of kind of what is important in those two different places so it could be that actually um growing up in in tokyo and growing growing up in london may actually produce a very similar type of attachment um and it's not about the culture or country 
And then Isle John kind of works with other people, and um, and and that's the saggy research. This is going back to the original research, and just reminding us that that different parts of the U.S. Uh, themselves produced different results. Um, so so it could just be that we just need to put that into perspective. Now, there's a lot to di uh, digest there. I would probably say kind of read through this, understand what you think is important in terms of culture, and then possibly look at planning an essay for this. There's lots of kind of short questions like this. Only reason I typically show this question is I've not even mentioned China, so it's not going to be the answer, okay? So please have a look at that. Um, these are, there's a short mark here, um, outline um, one or more studies. Okay, so that's pure knowledge. Outline and evaluate, that's a 16 marker. Um, and, and it can be a very interesting and exciting topic if you kind of embrace kind of what it is that's ultimately they're trying to tell us about uh, attachment in different cultures and, and variations that do exist. Thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, take care. Okay, bye.